Hello and welcome, people of the internet. My name is Jake Dragon Seven, and welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In the last episode, we made it here to the Skyview Temple, uh, which is our first dungeon in the game. Um, very exciting stuff. My, it's, I'd say it's most people's favorite part of any Zelda game. Um, the dungeons. Jeez, oh, I'm not necessarily the first ones, but you know, you, you gotta start somewhere, right? So, um, Skyview Temple is an okay dungeon. Um, kind of reminds you a lot of the um, Deku Tree in a lot of ways. It's like a very foresty feel. It has a more foresty feel than the other dungeons in the game. It seems to be something that the Zelda series likes to do a lot. It always, it always puts its forest dungeons early on. Um, you know, Ocarina of Time, the, um, Deku Tree, there's Deku Tree, uh, what? This, um, Palace. I'm not sure, Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda. How am I forgetting the Woodfall Temple? Um, and Wind Waker is the second one, and then Twilight Princess, um, with the Forsaken Woods in Wind Waker, and then Twilight Princess is like the thing in the fair and the other forest temple that's not as good as the Ocarina of Time one. Um, <coughs> anyway, we're gonna wanna remember that piece of wood for later, and yeah, I know that sounds very awkward. Uh, <laughs> alright, let's see here. Uh, I believe I wanna maybe roll, okay, apparently not. Uh, I think I know how you might be supposed to, um, I think I know how the game wants us to get that, which won't be available until later on. If I can remember it, I'll go back and check it. Um. Right, see. So yeah, you want to hit these trees in the orange part of them. I don't think I ever showed that on camera in Farron Woods, although I did do it once there. Oh, alright, wait. I think I want to shoot him with the slingshot. shot. I'm going to try to, uh, detarget. Z targeting? Hello? Z leads. Alright. Right, so that stuns him. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. Okay, well. I had it right, and then I screwed it all up. Thank you. That's better. I kind of should my sword. Alright. Well, that was a lot harder than it should have been. Well, I, I shouldn't. I didn't really say it's a lot harder than it should have been. More like it was. It took more time than it should have taken. I think that's a better way of wording that. Um, all right, here we go. One thing I do like about the uh, levels of this game is I do like how it feels like this is a weird thing, but it feels like they did put a lot of detail on how Link opens doors. Like they tend to be different in um, different dungeons, but that's pretty cool. cool. All right, let's see here. All right. So if you take out your slingshot. Here, if I remember this right. Okay, so. Okay, right. What you're supposed to do here is basically it'll follow your store, but if you try to shoot any projectiles at it, it'll. I don't know. It'll shut, it'll shut its eyelids, basically, and you won't be able to hit it. So, what you're supposed to do is just spin your sword around. It's sort of like, um. It's sort of like those enemies in Mario 64, like the eye things and the um, snowmen in Snowman's Land, where you have to, like, run around them, like, run circles around them to. I think it's even supposed to hint of that, but yeah, if you play Mario 64, you know what it's supposed to be like, so. Let's continue. Another thing too interesting. Oh. One thing I will give credit to Skyward Sword for is its dungeons are really good. It's just that because this is a first dungeon, it doesn't end up being kind of limited, but the later dungeons are definitely some of the better ones in the series. Skyward Sword probably is the worst, like, probably is one of the worst, um, I don't know, maybe not worse, but like, definitely doesn't have one of the better overworlds, but its dungeons are very good. It's one thing that, I, I think a lot of people do tend to credit about Skyward Sword, it has a lot of really good dungeons. And, oh, there we go, a Monster Claw. Um, hmm. I believe, actually, we can upgrade our shield if we get one, um, Jelly Blah, which you're supposed to get from a, um... Uh, choose, all right? Yeah, choose. All right. So, all right. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna save it yet. I don't know. All right, let's see. So this is a the green version of the Bokeh we were fighting earlier. Not that big of a deal. Seems like it's not really any different. I'm aside from like the design. I might actually have one more hit. I wasn't really counting, but I think the Bokeh Moons earlier green looked like that one, and more like five. So, you know, basic enemy recoloring. <clears throat> Any type of game that even, you know, has role-playing 
elements like Zelda. Uh, I mean, it's not like a like an like a JFPG, but it has like it's like a fantasy game. So that's kind of like odd JFPG as well. I say a lot. I don't mean. I definitely don't mean all of them. Um, you know, other series. Uh, <laughs> so let's see here. Um, I don't actually think. Okay, so that's not gonna get us up there. So it looks like we're gonna want to run back around and where we were. Yeah. Okay. Um. The music in this dungeon is like very, a little bit annoying, if you ask me. Like it doesn't really change. I don't really feel like it changes enough to be like intro, like um, to warrant being in a dungeon, I guess. Like, like I said too, like the dungeon in this game later on become like really good. Even this, like even in the music, you know, the music is good too. But uh, early on, it's a little bit iffy. Uh, let's see here. I believe we just want to roll into these with. Uh, I don't think it's. Uh, unless you're supposed to hit them with the. Okay, there we go. So this will. No, I didn't. Go oh, away. Uh, so basically, this is just a uh, shortcut to the beginning of the dungeon. Um, so if you ever need to return here, eh, you know, it's a nice shortcut to have. Uh, let's see here. So, both of these doors are locked, however, this one has a switch on it, so we're just gonna switch. I like the way the diamond switch is looking, too. I don't know if I said it in the last episode, but I, I do like the design of these diamond switches. How <laughs> they're like all their, like, a bunch of individual diamonds, and they, like, spread apart. You shoot them, so that's, you know, pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, Scott Fluzz. Now, I don't believe that will do anything to them. I believe what we need to do is get behind. No, oh, excuse me. I'll see if you see them if the slingshot works. Alright, I'm definitely doing this wrong. There is a weak. For the, the Scott Fluzz in this game, there's a weak. Point on their backs, which I believe is what we want to attack. So I'm gonna see if there's a way I can figure out to attack that and hit that. Or I mean, well, not really hit that, but just get behind it. Because I believe that's what we have to do. Um, could be wrong though. I'm seeing all of them. Uh, that more. That's another monster horn. That's uh, that's kind of cool, I guess. And we do need some of those if we're gonna upgrade the shield. Uh, I have a feeling that at this point, I don't think you really fight any shoes in this dungeon, so we're not even gonna be able to get the last material. At this point, even if we did, it would be pretty much just like need it for like one boss fight, so it wouldn't really be worth it. Now, if I need monster horns for the um, upgraded version of our next shield, I'll definitely go for that. Um, but yeah, for right now, it just seems like a bit of a waste of time. Hmm. I'm trying to think of there's some way you can just get it to like turn around. There we go. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. Alright. Well, not really what I was trying to do, but I was trying to get it to turn around. So. Alright, that works. So, we will continue on in this level. In the dun dungeon. Dungeon. This is the game. I get it right. So we hint here to do it. Right, right. So it appears as if there are some thing. Uh, no, well, that's not what I'm trying to do. All right. Okay. Well, it looks like the first one may very well be down here. Uh, let's see. All right. So I'm assuming this is the one the game is talking about being below. So that's so good. Um, well, maybe. Nine and a half minutes? I don't know. The more I've started recording the, um, oh, crap. Anyway, um, the more I've been recording, the more I've, um, been, like, more, try to be more observant with, uh, my, uh, whatever. Making sure everything is working in the recordings. Alright, so that makes this area flooded. Which means, now, on this side, there should be something above here, in theory. So maybe 
I wonder if we're supposed to head out here first. There might actually be something out here, so I'm gonna give that a go. Um. Alright, so I think maybe this might. Okay, yeah, that is out of a reach, but uh, let me head back up here. <laughs> I believe there might be something up here this way. Okay, that's there's just that thing we checked earlier. I remember there being something up that way from last time I played this game a few years ago, so. Yeah, definitely my memory's gonna be a little hazy with these dungeons, but um. Like, at least in certain sections of them. So, I'm assuming that also means that this is gonna be out of a reach. Actually, maybe not. Alright, so that was not out of a reach, although. Now, that does make me think maybe that's how we're supposed to get up to the area that I just tried getting up to and failed at getting up to. So, I guess we can just get that another go. Um. <sighs> I'm gonna be here a minute. Alright, looking at it again, um, there's no way I'm making it up there. I don't even think I would have timed that right, but I can tell there's no way I'm getting up there. So, as of this point in the game, there's no way to go underwater, so that means that's one thing that will not be the solution to this one. Um, on the other hand, uh, hmm. Oh, well, there's only down here, it looks like. Uh, huh. That works. Hmm. Let's see what happens then. Uh, that's how we get in that door, so I guess that's where we want to go next. Um,. See, so it seems to, in some ways, mirror the previous room, the, not the, not the previous room, the room is the other side of here. So it's like four hits to beat, alright. Uh, let's see here. So for this, we're going to want to, no, we don't want to attack him yet. <laughs> I just remember what we're supposed to do here. Um, right, there's three vines along the side of this room, and... Let's swing across them like we did earlier. Um, <laughs> somehow managed to get up a thank you bow from the other side of the room. Uh, wait, actually, I think there's something over here that I'm just noticed. All right, I wonder if I'm supposed to go for that. I think I'm gonna wait a minute. And see if I need to get for that later. Alright. Getting. Hmm. Well, I'm in here. Um, the way you should take out these Gotulas is to just swing back here and then start stabbing them. And they can just you know miss every single time you're trying to push on that I guess is ultimately just gonna be a useless part of the web that will never get you stuck 
What's even the point of having this? It's not, it's not like it deals damage here or anything. It's just annoying. Uh. So apparently these parts of the lab are just straight up indestructible. But alright. So we'll just leave them, I guess. Be forever. Left there, just forgotten. Um, I have no idea how long this episode is at this point because I've spent I spent way too long looking for that switch. Um, uh, all right, here you go. And oh my god, really, Link? Do you have to just do that? Anyway, get another. All right, nice. So yeah, there are dungeon maps in this game, as it turns out. Um. And this will just reveal the entire dungeon. Now... I believe they might have may have taken the compass out of this game. Um, I was saying in an earlier episode that I thought they took dungeon maps out, so I think I'm actually I think it was actually on backwards on that because at least from right here it definitely seems like they've uh, taken out. Um, what was I gonna say? On the compass because this seems to be everything the compass is supposed to do. So uh, I don't know. Who knows? We'll, we'll just see what happens. Uh, Easily, I do like I would say to lock doors. I feel like that can make things a little bit easier to check through. All right, so it looks like we are supposed to head back here and just hit the crystal, uh, crystal switch. And I believe it's actually the um, well, that was higher up than the tablet was everything earlier. So we're just gonna hit that, and hopefully that'll open up a path for us to take in the next episode. Because I'm not keeping this up. This episode is probably long enough at this point. Alright, yeah, it does indeed um, fill up the water level in the rest of the room. So, in the next episode of The Legend of Zelda Scout Sword, uh, if I, can, I probably came out like really stumbled right there. Um, that didn't even make sense. We are going to continue heading through the Skyview Temple, um, namely right up there. Alright, see you guys then. Hello everybody and thank you for watching today's episode of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to see my future content and it helps support my channel. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy some of my other videos. This includes my Random Saturday series where I basically do whatever I want on Saturdays, and my Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy, which is the other Let's Play currently I'm running on this channel. Well, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the future. Bye.